turn the mics on. And... All right. All Good right. evening, everybody. Good evening. Tonight we're going to have uh, Mr. Michael uh, Methen uh, with us uh, and uh, talk about his uh, really cool 66 GTO. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a GTO or Le Mans, but um, anyhow. It's a Le Mans. I'll, I'm not afraid to tell people. There you go. So it doesn't matter. It, it, they built the GTO in Le Mans anyway. So. But uh, <laughs> we, uh, we're going to have Michael uh, talk uh, about his vehicle tonight uh, and share with us why he chose the paint scheme he has. And uh, some of you guys probably, uh, if you hang out at Norwalk every year at the Pontiac Nationals, you know Mike because of his uh, straw hat, which he has on tonight. <laughs> so, yeah. but uh, yeah, really cool blue shirt on too. I don't know if you all can see it. Yeah, look yeah. at that. I like that. Cool. Yeah, yeah we well, do see that. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, Michael, um, what? Uh, how long you owned that car? I, I think I've owned that car for like twenty-five years. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I was thinking maybe, maybe almost thirty. I was thinking that was a high school car for you, but it's not. No, uh, my high school car is in the attic. In the attic. Yeah. Um, I had to bring a <laughs> okay. See, <laughs> 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 so ain't got no room. Where are you gonna put it, right? Oh, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I had a red '67 um, that I bought up in uh, Wells Beach, Maine, in 1989 when I got out of high school. Uh, it was a 326 car with a turbo 400, and um, yeah, that was like my hot rod for a long time, and that's how I met it. Yeah. Uh, and he helped me with the car and stuff, went through transformations, and then. I ended up finding my 66. Um, it belonged to a guy in my town who used to deliver pizzas in it. And um, it had an LS6 big block Chevy in it, Turbo 400 with a brake and a 12 bolt. Uh, oh, thank God you steel. rescued it. Yeah, I rescued <laughs> it, yeah. I bought that car for $450 minus powertrain. Wow. Wow. Yeah, it had a black interior. It had a Thunderbolt teardrop hood scoop on it that looked god ungodly. Um, <laughs> Look, yeah, cool. so I bought 450 bucks. Nice. Well, so some of you guys may know and some of you guys may not know, but uh, uh, Mike is uh, part of the Raven team. And uh, some of you guys know uh, Ed Page and Eddie Page and Steve Page. Those guys have the uh, beautiful 1969 Firebird they call the Raven. Well, Michael here is part of their pit crew and uh, has a big hand in helping that uh, those uh, guys get that car down the track. So. Uh, it's, it's really cool to see Mike racing his own car, too. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that uh, that uh, those guys all helped you build this car, didn't they? Yeah. Um, yeah I, I, mean, I couldn't do that without those guys. Um, I remember, uh, I think, one of our early years going to Norwalk, uh, we used to be on the other side camping. And, um, you, know, you know, we had our RV dropped off, and we drove uh, uh, I remember that. <laughs> right. And uh, uh, we show up in that. Um, and, uh, and we started, you know, walking around the pits, having a good time. Um, and then I remember seeing a guy who had a 66 Tempest. And um, uh, the guy actually shows up in Norwalk. He has a, uh, that 39 Pontiac rat rod. It says, like, uh, like P38 or something like that on it. Is that um, the one with the overhead cam six-cylinder in it? No, no. It's got a traditional V8 motor in it. Okay. Um, but the car is like a rat rod and stuff. Yep. And, um, but he had the 66 Tempest that it had, you know, he was on pavement pounders one time, and uh, and the car was similar to mine. Like the build was similar, a little faster. And I was talking to him, and uh, after we left, I go, guys, I go in two weeks. There's a nostalgia race in the driveway. I want to race in it, and uh, will you guys help me? And it's like my car just needed like a, the motor, a tranny, and rear end were in it, but I just need to be plumbed, wired, and make it work, you know. Yeah. And, uh, in two weeks, we round tripped the car, and we raced it in New England, and I lost in the finals. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you made it to the finals though. Yeah, I haven't raced in 10 years, and uh, I lost in the finals. Wow. And, uh, you know what happens too when you don't race for a long time? You show up, right, with a car that nobody knows. They're like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to beat him. And, you know, they punch a couple of in numbers into the blocks, and, you know, you go <laughs> double O on them. And you <laughs> I love it. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, awesome, so, awesome. Um, so what what power plant you got in that thing? Uh, the motor in there is a 471 cubic gauge motor. Um Cylinder heads are um, uh, first generation Edelbrocks uh, that I bought off a friend of ours, Jeff Williams. Okay. And, um, the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the cylinder heads were sent to uh, Jim Robinson um, unexpectedly. Um, Ed Page and my wife collaborated for Christmas yeah. and set my heads down there. And, um, well, that's a nice, nice surprise. 
Yeah, um, yeah, that's what we call an unauthorized purchase, and we'll get into that. <laughs> unauthorized purchase. Oh, yeah. yeah, you had to pay for it, but they sent them down. Oh, no, I didn't have to pay for it either. Oh, uh, wow. Okay. So, well, you know what, then? How can you complain? <laughs> yeah, well, so, the, uh, um, yeah, so the gym did the heads and intake for us. Um, the heads threw up flow, uh, I think, three third, uh, 340 through the intake. Cool. Um, no carb spacer, because uh, that shit don't fit on any soft GTO hood. Right. Um, Cut a hole. Yeah, you no. Know. <laughs> uh, it has to look like a car. You can't look like a race car. Right? Okay. Yeah, that Well, you car. do drive this on the street, don't you? Yeah, I wish I drove it more. Um, it's just, you know, life gets in the way. I do too many things. Um, where we live, um, I live in the country, but it's not a country where you live. You know what I mean? It's it's a little more rural. Okay. Um, or less rural, I should say. Um, you know, and the roads aren't great, and... Um, Last year, I know mean, you guys follow us on Facebook, but um, someone crashed into my wife's convertible last year. Oh, bomber. Yeah, so um, that's at the body shop now. And um, so uh, but it's, uh, you know, I'm kind of a little gun shy driving, and my neck hurts from rubbing that thing so I'm afraid <laughs> Yeah, I don't blame you, man. Yeah. People are crazy. Just not well, yeah. Listen, the sad if I'm saying they're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> but yeah, no, so the most of say 471. Um, uh, Jim and Ed picked the hot cam. Um, the, uh, it's got a, um, uh, 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 a Folly um, 1100 Dominator on it. What's the uh, duration on your cam, if you don't mind sharing? So this is this is the funny topic, right? Um, you know, people talk about, you know, uh, people I never meet, they always ask, right? You know, hey, how you doing? You know, uh, tell me a little bit about your car. We have for a moment. No, the first thing they ask, What's your duration? What's your lobe separation? And stuff like that. <laughs> never mind what about, it's like, listen, if you want, I can tell you some, how big something else is. Right. <laughs> well, no, they don't, you know what? Let's it, get to the meat and potatoes. We want to know what the cam is. <laughs> yeah, so, so I'll be quite honest. So the only thing I know about the cam, and my phone's going to blow up in a few minutes for this, is stuff like that. I know it's 700 lift and that's it. Okay. I don't know who makes it. I don't care. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, lobe separation. It doesn't matter, right? As long as it makes a gift from point A to B, and we're all right. <laughs> and it's, you know, it sounds kind of, you know, it's just one of those things that just always irk me. You know, it's like everyone, you're looking at a car in front of you, there's 9,000 things on it that you should ask, right? Um, and that's the thing <laughs> well, we're going to get to those, but you know what? The camshaft, everybody, everybody wants to know everyone that first. Everyone wants to know. <laughs> so, so, yeah, all right, well, since, you, since you're in the dark about that, and you're in the dark about the heads, what else can I ask you about that you're not in the dark about? Oh, yeah. No. But, uh, what kind of no, it, to no, that? Yeah. Well, it was funny. I remember uh, the first year bringing the car to Norwalk, right? I'm all excited. I'm all proud. Uh, Dave Nazaro let me borrow his trailer. Um, Dave's awesome. Dave lives like probably 10, 15 minutes from us. Okay. And he's part of our group along with like uh, Mike Oliveria, um, Jonathan, and um, uh, Jeff uh, Primantil. I always say his name wrong. Um, um who else? Uh, Don, I mean, Don, yeah, Don Green. Um, Mike Green from A1 Auto. Um, the, uh, the 1A Auto, not, uh, if I say A1, he thinks a steak sauce. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, don't be doing that. Yeah, no, he doesn't like that. Uh, but, um, you know, we have this big group that we all uh, join, you know, and Dave Nazaro is like, you know, he's a big guy in that. And so what we do is if someone has a part, rather than put it out there, he, we say, hey, you need a part, you want something, or we have something before we, we keep it in the family before because it's hard to get. Right. It's hard to get parts. You're yeah. right. Yeah, and good parts. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, I mean, just everything we get today is junk, but. 100%, 100%. I just got a set of shocks off for uh, uh, Jonathan, and he goes, hey, listen, I want to offer these shocks up before, you know, I put them out on, you know, Marketplace and stuff. So so we do that all the time. But um, now Dave let me borrow his trailer. So uh, he lives in Grove and a couple towns over, and he let me borrow the trailer. So, anyways, bring the car to the track. And I'm all excited, right? So happy to be there. And uh, um, Jules and his brother Keith uh, were there. And uh, I love those guys. Those guys are awesome. And um, they had, uh, Jules is asking me all about my car. And he's like, what do you have? For? And he said the same thing. What do you have for duration? And I'm like, I don't friggin' know. <laughs> and he just looks at me. Now, I've never, I've met him like once, I think. And we talked on the phone once. But that's like a really like second time meeting. And they go, I don't friggin' know. <laughs> he's like, okay. Right, well, let me ask you a question you might know. How, how much compression does the engine have? It only makes 10 to 1. Okay, good. So you can run pump gas in it. 
Yeah, yeah. No, uh, so it's, uh, we, it was really conservative. Nice. Uh, stuff like that because I, the, the goal was is that um, I had a, a 67 400 block, and we decided I go, listen, I want to make something that will make a little over 500 horsepower that the car would run high tens in the heat and I could street drive. Yep. And well, um, you achieved that goal. Yeah. Uh, so we've gone 1050s in the heat. Um, nice. But, uh, you know, we keep chasing the number. I don't know why. I should just set it up set it and forget it and just enjoy it yeah, you know? it's, a, it's, a, it's just a fun thing to keep trying to make it better and better there's nothing wrong with that yeah but, yeah you know it's like you know um but we had um but uh ed actually is the mastermind behind that um and i remember jules asking me questions and ed saying you know what the deal was what the deal was and you know and he's like well don't you know anything about the car and i'm like listen i go ed and i put the, the motor together and I've probably spent more time on my hands on engine parts on that than my my body, right? But I I just can't figure. You know, if you ask me what's this, and you know, I just, you know, I well, we you have a right down somewhere. We're, we're gonna forgive you this time, Michael. You're allowed to not know everything, but okay. uh, <laughs> but the uh, well, I know everything, just not that. Right. I thought you knew everything. That's what you tell me. I don't. I don't well, know. I'm just going by what you good, say. Good thing Ed, Ed Page is watching. He sent you the cam card. Oh, so he did. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, then I'm gonna yeah. take a look at that. Well, okay. So, Michael, how much does your car weigh? Uh, my car weigh? weighs the same. My car and the Raven weigh the exact same. Really? Yeah. Thirty. Thirty-six forty. Nice. Yeah, um, uh, the guy who built Ed's car, uh, Mike Hall, uh, he, you know, we were kind of surprised with what the car weighed, and he asked me, Michael, how much your car weigh? And I told him, he's like, what's with you guys? Like, oh, we do everything <laughs> together, so the cars have to weigh together. Well, did you tell him you drink together? Ah, uh, no, we don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, so it looks like you got a 266 and 280 and 50. That's a nice cam. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Nice it's, it's actually, it's, um... It's uh, when um, um, Jim was uh, designing it and stuff. I, you know, I told him, like, listen, I don't want to have to work on this thing. I just want to race it uh, and drive it and stuff. And I go, the thing will make power anyways, you know, by accident. So, yep. you know, just I don't want to beat up valve train parts. Um, you know, it's it's I saved a lot of money and I wanted to do it once. You know, and I, you know, we check things and you know, we always do you know compression check, leak down, uh, check the valves. We do like you know once twice a year. Yep. Um, and since we've had that together, I think we've had it together for like maybe like five years now. Um, yeah. And we did have a mishap. We blew a head gasket a couple of years ago. No, that's um, a nice cam and the uh, uh, nice duration. The uh, load separation is 110. So. It's a nice piece. Um, I'm very happy. You know, it's like, yeah, it's, you know, those guys, they, they built it really. I mean, I, me Ed and I assembled it and stuff. You, you just are there to be pretty and cook for them. Yeah. I get it. The only thing is, you know what? You don't wear a skirt. <laughs> uh oh we froze up what happened yeah, it's funny <laughs> there you're back <laughs> yeah i know he keeps fading in and out he's like the phantom <laughs> <laughs> what's up with that i don't know so all right well and so your car weighs 3600 pounds runs on pump gas cam's yeah. decent you got 471 cubic inches you said it's 1150 holly what rear yeah. do you run in that thing uh it's a quick performance four nine inch okay. uh with 370s with yeah. a spool Cool. It's a definitely street of looks up for the spool part, but with that little tire in the back, it's probably not bad. Yeah. You gotta be careful in the rain. Yeah. Yep. Just be careful around the corners. Yeah. So, uh, what? Uh, how big is the tire on the back of that thing? Uh, right now we're running a twenty-eight ten-five on a fifteen-inch rim on a fifteen by eight wheel. Oh, okay. What's your sixty-foot time of that car? Uh, that car is a snail. Um, it's uh, its best is one fifty-five. Uh, but uh, it'll go um, like average, like 158, 160. Yeah, wow, you're right. That is a little. So what's this, uh, the torque converter stall speed? The torque converter is, um, I think it's like a 5500 stall. Uh, but that's on a foot brake. That's on a trans brake. Okay. Uh, so I'll foot brake at like two grand, and and it flash. It'll flash the 5500. Uh, we shift the thing at 7000 RPM. Wow, you shifted that high, huh? Yeah, it makes power to seventy two. No kidding. Um, but as Ed says, I still have training wheels, so I'm not I'm not shifting it any higher than that. <laughs> well, that's that's higher than most Pontiac guys can stomach. They start getting real nervous around six thousand. <laughs> yeah, I was like that for a while, uh, and then it's just just you know hang on, Snoopy. You know it, it, it is fine there. Yeah, you know what? It'll tell you if it don't like it. It'll yep. start spinning oh, yeah. parts out. <laughs> yeah, we had a um, when we first put it together, we. Um, 
you know, I thought the thing, you know, on the dyno, you know, supposedly on the dyno it made 721 horsepower at 7,200 RPM. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I was, I thought this thing was going to like do giant wheelies and go to the moon and, and I was scared <laughs> to death. And, um, and I never had a rev limiter on it. And no, 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 that's fine. We put a rev limiter on it. That was like the first thing. We took it for a street drive and I stood on it and almost ended up in someone's front yard. <laughs> it happened so fast. And uh, so I pedaled it straightened out. And so I, Ed, Ed ordered me a, uh, a rev limiter for it. We put that on it. And so we're racing it. And you put the thing in the high gear and the thing would pop. So we're checking um, timing. And, you know, it's like there's no fuel showing on the plug. So we're putting more fuel in it, putting more fuel in it. And uh, Patrick from, um, what the hell's the name of it? Um, he builds all those carburetors. I forget what, he, what the name of the company is. Uh, uh, there's so uh, many carb companies out there. Yeah. Man. I don't it's, know who paid. I forget who he, but anyways, uh, so he, you know, he built a carburetor for us and stuff. We're putting fuel in it, fuel in it, and there's no sh uh, color showing on the plug. And um, so the thing's popping, still in high gear, and just in high gear. So we're driving it through, like, where Ed lives, and, uh, and Ed lives, like, say, five miles from me. And also I smell antifreeze. So we stop over, put gas in it, could put gas in it, the thing won't spin over. It's hmm. so like, what happened? So I click it over again, it fires up, and I can see, like, I'm killing mosquitoes and behind me from, like, smoke. <laughs> so long and short we blew a head gasket so we had it fixed um you know took it all apart fixed it and stuff and ed's a maniac right he's like well it was like a saturday you know like in the afternoon he's like okay next thing you know we're pulling the thing apart and i'm like dude i want to like barbecue i bought like food over and stuff he's like, oh, <laughs> on the car. Well, what oh, better wait. time to, to barbecue than when you're changing head gaskets right right yeah so and, 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 and um so leaning over the car changing head gaskets which is a lot of fun um so it took us like a week, you know, ordering parts and stuff, and, and we got it all back together and stuff. But we didn't hurt nothing. Just blew a head gasket, thank God. Yep, yep. That's an easy fix. So Yeah, so, yeah. but I thought it was, you know, the rev limiter. You know, cause I didn't know. I never had a rev limiter before. And it's right. like, what's it? It should have been bouncing off the rev limiter, right? Instead, so you, were, said, you were, you were uh, spraying for mosquitoes, but yeah. Yeah, well, yeah that's so I right. leaned it out. Uh, so, so what causes, it come, did you guys figure out what caused the head gasket failure or is it just yeah a, so it was like super lean um and uh we kept on dumping fuel in it and um it, it, it wasn't showing on the plug so come to find out we had a problem with the uh, mechanic we had a mechanical fuel pump on it uh, and it was like a, it was like one of those like robbie mac like yep. a billion dollar pumps yep yep and um so we had a gauge on the motor but not inside the car so we ended up getting an electric pump in it and we put an electric pump in, we put a gauge on the car, and then all of a sudden we started showing color on the plugs, and Good, car yeah. started going faster, and yeah, it's like, you know, yeah. the stars align, velvet yeah. ropes posh. So you were just starving that poor girl for fuel, and she was detonating, that's what was going on. <laughs> it was not happy. It went from, like, 1120s to, like, 1060. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's huge, and I tell people that all the time. Fuel system has to be there. If not, yeah. you're going to experience exactly what you experienced. I don't care if it's an eight to one motor. If it's running yeah. lean, it'll blow a head gasket. Yeah, we, we, Ed called Robbie Mack. He's like, "Hey, what's the deal with this thing?" He told him what we had for a fuel system. He's like, "No, nah, you should have. You should be all set, man." I'm like, "Listen, we're not, you know, um, we're not seeing color on the plugs, and and you know, the big problem with that car too is that that little hood scoop does not suck a lot of air through it. Right. So that dominator isn't very happy. Right. Right. You no. Know, so. You know how I said, you know, um, unauthorized purchases? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, <laughs> we're in our Friday meeting, and um, Ed says to me after we bought the rotating assembly, we bought the rotating assembly from uh, David Butler. And we have all the parts, and we're looking at them, and they're like, wow, they're pretty. And uh, he goes, um, uh, I go, so um, he goes, hey, there's a problem. So I go, well, what's the problem? It's never good when Ed Page says there's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so he says, uh, uh, the cylinder heads are not uh, 72 cc's. And I go, well, how do you know the cylinder heads are not 72 cc's? He goes, well, they're 87 cc's. So I'm like, all right. I go, how do you know that? He goes, the heads are not here. So immediately I knew there Jim Robinson had them. <laughs> so I go, okay. I go, well, so now that you know we're kind of opening the book here and stuff and we're ironing things out, I go, did you order the intake manifold? He goes, I did. I go, did you order it for a 4150? He goes, no, I did not. <laughs> He goes, I ordered for a Dominator. And I'm like, you know, that sit don't fit underneath the stock GTO hood, right? He goes, it'll fit. And then the space changed color. So I said to him, now the car's all painted. And so uh, I go, um, right. and if this don't fit underneath the hood, he's like, well, you can put like, like, a, uh, like one of those, um, uh, what the hell you call them? Um, 
that hood scoop there that they run, uh, like the this, like this now just super stocks run them and stuff like oh, that. I like the old super uh, duty stu- scoop. Yeah. yeah, and then that looks cool. I like that, you know. But it's like my car's already painted. I like this. I like I like that that factory look, you know. Yeah. So we get the thing back. We get the car running and the motor running and stuff. We put it, the motor in the car, and we close the hood. And uh, Ed's brother Stephen had a uh, um, a drop base, so we put the drop base on it. Ed's closing the hood. We had no wheel wells in it. He's closing the hood. And uh, he's looking, and you can see him. He's sweating, and he's like, "Click!" And he's like, "Thank God!" Yeah. <laughs> so, so come to find out, he had a, he started a thread on PY to ask if that stuff would fit. <laughs> ah, so you were way it's on ahead you. before you even knew. Ah, okay. Yeah. So they were just playing with you a little bit. Hey, nothing wrong. Oh, just, yeah. yeah, it's all right. It's allowed. Yeah. So, well, we might have some questions here. Let's. Uh, I don't want to yeah. run out of time on Mike. So let's see if there's anybody in the audience wants to ask Mike a Let couple me go questions. Let back here. We have a bad habit of running over, so I, I want to make sure that I, I try to stay on task. You know what? We okay, got I, I took a day off to hang out with you guys, so. Perfect. You, you are the man. Thank you so much. No, that, I really uh, appreciate you folks out having me on here. This is an honor. Well, you know what? Uh, it's our honor to have you, Michael. I've, you know, I've known you, what, now? Probably 10 years? At least. Yeah, and man, I've never seen you without your straw hat. I don't know if you sleep in that thing or what, but I don't know, but I mean I have nice hair though too. You yeah, know? you do. Yeah. Look at that. You got a full head of hair. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you man, you hide all that. Hey, yeah. did you uh, had, she uh, yeah, she did find it. Yeah. She, okay, my uh, daughter in law found the picture of you at, at uh, Summit Racing. At Summit, yeah. Yeah, let's see if we can find that and put it on there for you. That was that was that was awesome. Now, that's, that's Luke. Luke. That's Luke. Well, you know what? I sent you that one. Maybe she didn't send it to that. Oh. There, there it is. Yeah, put that up there so everybody can see it. Yeah. As soon as I seen this mannequin in the store, I thought, Michael's here. Yeah. Oh, no. No, that's a dummy. <laughs> <laughs> Did it show up on there? Uh, it showed up on, on ours. Yeah, I'm trying to... I'm not sure how to share with Zoom quite yet. Yeah, we're learning all this stuff, Gay. Yeah. So hang with us, and uh, we're just banging our head on the wall trying to figure this out. But we're getting there. Yep. That's it's right. hard to do with just the wife and I because I get a lot of feedback, and then it makes the mic sound all crazy, and I don't get the best sound. Then so I'm trying to compensate for that. And then whenever like I have someone like you come on, that the mics aren't close to each other, so everyone's working like it should. Now, <laughs> like you'll be way up like loud and i'm like whoa if you, if you give me a second if you give me a second i can probably draw it yeah okay <laughs> i didn't know you were an artist too no i'm, I'm, I'm artistic <laughs> autistic or artistic well uh, that's um i don't know if that uh <laughs> i don't know if you can see that i don't know <laughs> I don't, yeah. Well, yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah, looks just like that mannequin yeah. at the Summit Store. <laughs> it's off the scale. Um, really, there's no questions. Just people saying hi. Beautiful car. Nice. Okay. Nice. Um, what? So, what made you guys decide on that paint scheme? I know that was an old Arnie Beswick scheme, but uh, what what made you choose that? The the car was originally supposed to be like a teal green and stuff. It's like an 068 metal metallic uh, green that we saw at a Chevy dealership. Okay. And uh, we were at the Pontiac Nationals, and um, we saw uh, the star of the circuit car was there. Uh, um, John Holmes has it. And uh, so the car was there. It was all shiny and beautiful, and I was just like, oh, my God, this is beautiful. And we started talking to him a little bit, and... And I was just—I took some pictures of it, and I'm like, "Wow, this is awesome! I really like the car." And he came, uh, him and I got into golf. His golf car. We went over, saw Ed's car, and we chatted. We hung up for like an hour, and I'm like, "Wow, man, I really like your car." And we left it at that. And I looked through all my pages, and I'm like, of all my photos, I'm like, "Wow, that car is really sharp." And um, as soon as I get home, High Performance Pontiac had it on their pavement pounders, and I'm like, "You know what? I'm gonna paint my car this color." <laughs> so. I ended up getting a hold of Arnie, and I asked him, I go, hey, because he was the only one I could get a hold of at the time, can I paint my car that color, but I'm not going to put, I'm not going to letter it? He's like, yeah, go for it. And I go, I asked him what the color code was, and he really didn't know. He's like, well, it's original to that year, and, and he's right, it is an original color to that year, that orange is, right? So um, so the car is predominantly white, they fade the orange, and it's a 66 orange color, and then they fade in the black. Um, I brought that 
Pavement Pounders magazine to my paint body guy, Rob Kelly. And uh, I asked him, I go, uh, his brother works at me in my old company and stuff. And I give him the magazine. I go, hey, Rob, can you paint my car this? As soon as I hand him the book, he looks at it and then says to me immediately, yeah, sure, no problem. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, fine. I go, let's do it. So New Year's Day, him and his brother show up at my house. The car's in primer, like 10 different colors. And uh, he looks at the car, he rubs his hand over it and stuff like that. He goes, um, yeah, as soon as you can take like, the motor and trainee out of the car and stuff, um, I'll come pick up the car. So he leaves. Ed's over, and um, he goes, um, yeah, so it was, it was a nice day. It wasn't like snowing or raining or anything like that. He goes, uh, all right, you're going to show up, bring the car over to my house? I'm like, yeah. So I drive the car over to Ed's house. An hour later, the motor and trainee's out of the car, and I call Rob. I go, hey, the motor and trainee's out of the car. He goes, yeah, we figured that. We'll get the trailer already loaded up. We'll be over. <laughs> <laughs> they know you guys. <laughs> yeah. We, we, took the, we took the motor. I had a 400 in it, and it was like a, um, like a 350 horsepower 400. The car go like 12 -0. And it was a fun motor. Yeah. Um, and uh, um, we took we took all the parts off of it, put it on a bench, and there's like five pieces there. And it's like this kind of drove over here, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, one one you know one wire alternator, um, uh, one belt on it, um, a fan, the radiator. Yeah, really, that's an all there. Cool. <laughs> yeah, nothing to it, you know. Yeah. Well, that's cool. The new the new my car the way it is now isn't much more. Your car what? Now the way the car is now, it's still it's still very much the same. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So, but you did have one of those in high school. That I, for whatever reason, I was thinking that was your high school car. And so locally, the local track, you know, they saw my red '67 for a lot of years. And when I show up with that car, it was all in primer. They're like, oh, you're doing some work to your car. You still get your car? And I'm like, not the same car, man. <laughs> yeah, they don't know. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Well, it's you know. The other one was 67, this 66. They're almost similar cars, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very close, so. Well, so what's your plans for this year with the car? Are you just going to uh, polish it and take it to the racetrack, or you got any plans for changing anything? Or? Uh, a few things. Uh, we had to do some maintenance, um, and uh, we got to clean it because it's nasty. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, I have a couple pieces. I got rear shocks for it. I got upper control arms for it. Um maybe that we're going to do an exhaust system out of hell with it <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah you know uh i want to actually just race it and, and um and i want to enjoy it i want to street drive it too a little bit more good for you, you. Know. that's what that's what it's all about you know and to make a car that's specifically for racing unless it's a road course car drag cars are i mean it, they're just not any fun you get you work on them all stinking week long and you go to the racetrack and you're in the car for if you're lucky anywhere from eight to ten seconds at a pass <laughs> yeah or you know you, the car blows up ahead of you on the stage and on uh, top of staging and you're sweating the net death in it that's or, a good time or the uh the way it always goes it seems like when you go to the track something goes wrong and you got to fix it while you're there and you're working on the car to track too so yeah yeah that's not no that's not fun um we've done plenty of that but uh no, that's that thing's actually pretty simple. It's it's been like a good car. Um, you know, it's uh, we made it so that it was simple. Um, if it was up to Ed, he wants to. It started out being a hundred shot. Now I think he's up to like three hundred <laughs> shot of nitrous on it. And uh, he well, says, uh, "Stop there. You know what? Let's dream and let's put a thousand horsepower nitrous on that thing." Yeah. Oh, why not? Have, and you need a mini tub it so you can get at least 12 inches of rubber underneath the back of that thing. And you're gonna have to have more gear, and you need a little more converter too. And yeah. by the way, we're going to change that cam. And <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. And by the way, let's put a halo in it and stuff like yeah. that. The window yeah. and stuff. So, oh, I need belts too. I need that, belts. That's how that's how it usually gets out of control. So keep alcohol in the cabinet when you're making plans, because yeah. if the alcohol comes out, your pocketbook empties real fast. The um, it was funny. People always one of the big questions people always ask me. They're like, uh, "How much you have into that car?" And um, Ed usually chimes in. He's like, Mike doesn't know how much he has into it. <laughs> so he's my parts guy. So I just, you know, I, like I said, we have a goal. And how do we achieve that goal? So he's he's amazing. You know, I can, we'll talk about something. And, uh, hey, we need this part. And so he'll say he'll say to me, I'll say to him, no, I'm sorry. I'll say to him, hey, Ed, I, um, I want to buy this part for my car. And he's like, um, yeah. He goes, I go, well, Michael, that's a good part. He goes, but let's get this better part. I'm like, well, Ed, it's a lot. I'm, I'm conservative. So he's like. I get it's a lot of money. He goes, listen. He goes, you're gonna do it. Tw you're gonna you're there, go in there anyways. So what you're gonna do is buy it, the right part, the expensive part, right off the bat. Then not only do you have to buy it twice, you only have to install it once. 
there you go. That's the way. So, that, so he's he, not. So he's not wrong, that bastard. That's exactly the truth. You know what? You can <laughs> you can buy it twice and install it twice, or you can buy it one time and buy the good stuff and yep. be done with it. Yeah, and, and it's it's solid. You know. Um, yep, that yeah. was right. That's exactly right. Well, and, that's good. Did say the rings are gap to take two hundred fifty shot. Uh, <laughs> he asked. He asked Thinking me. Ahead, I like it. <laughs> yeah. So so he had. Uh, um, so I did all the file fit. So we have like the old hand crank file fit and stuff. So after you get oh, through yeah. like one side, yep, the thing yep. gets really dull. <laughs> and so because I've never done it before, and I always tell people, listen, if you're gonna build, if you want to build a motor and you want to do it yourself, feel con- if you have mechanical knowledge, don't be afraid. Right. Um, because what's gonna happen is you know you're gonna read all about it, you're gonna watch a hundred videos, and then you're gonna read it while you're doing it and watch videos. Yep. As opposed to you know. You know, listen. I believe it or not, I once in a while I'll make a mistake, but it's because it's something I've done a thousand times, and your mind gets lost, and you're thinking about racing or something, right? You know, but and and but you're doing this because you've never done it before, and you know if you mess up, you're going to be in trouble. So you take your time, and I must have like did one ring. It took me an hour because I was so afraid of messing it up. Right. So he's like, do you remember where you gapped them rings at? And I'm like, I have no clue, man. He goes, well, they gapped okay? gap so you can handle a 300 shot. <laughs> you just did it to whatever number he told you to do it at, right? <laughs> uh, that's it. Hey, just don't, don't, don't argue with him. Yeah, there you go. So, you know, Ed was setting you up, and that's okay. Oh, yeah. Are, do you, are you running head studs or you got head bolts? What do you got for... Uh, I know. We have a, a set of ARP head studs. Yeah, there uh, you go. Yeah, so... Yeah, he, he's it. prepping there too. Yep. Do you have comedic head gasket, or do you have a? Oh, uh, I don't know. Ed <laughs> said, he's gonna yell at me for that. No, we actually we could not get those when we blew the head gasket, so we just have like felt pros in there that you know. Oh man, yeah, you'll be doing yeah. that again. So yeah. whenever you that was four you years better, ago, you so. better buy those right now because I'm telling you, you're gonna be doing those again. <laughs> Ed, uh, can you take care of that for me, please? <laughs> yeah, so no, it's funny. So uh, when we were doing that build, um, every week I'd show up to Ed, I'd give him a stack. Stack is $1,000. Hmm. So I give him $1,000 every single time I come over to his house. That's and, the way uh, this works. Yeah, yeah, all right. It's, and so one of my buddies was saying, he's like, well, where are you getting all your stuff? I go, Eddie Page gets it for me. He goes, well, how's that work? I go, you know, I go, I just keep giving him money until he says stop. <laughs> so one day I go over and I go, so Ed, I, I, I was heading over and I go, hey, listen, I get, you know, I, I stopped off. I got some food and stuff. And hey, I'm coming over. I go, I was going to uh, bring you a, I want to bring a stack. He goes, um, you might want to bring two. <laughs> yeah, so I turned like three shades of red. I was so afraid after that. Uh, but, uh, um, but you know, it's like, but he's a funny guy, right? It's like, I'll ask him, man, how much are you? How much are you? How much are you? Uh, I don't know. I'll have to look. I'll have to look. You know, him and I have been friends for over 30 years. And how much you owe you? He will, he'll have to send me like an email or something like that because he won't tell me up front, you know. I have to drag it out. <laughs> well, but I always want to make sure that he always has, you know, he, he's doing it. And it's almost says, like, well, you know, yeah, he puts it on his car. He does this. I go, listen, he does all the math for me, looks at it. I go, does all the research. I go, whatever he says he wants, he's going to get. That's all there is to it. I didn't have to do it. And if I did it, I'd get the wrong part. Well, it helps that you guys are good friends and you know each other. And you, <clears throat> and you know Ed's gonna get the right part for you. he's not gonna lead you down the wrong path so you know you know i'm fortunate you know it's not only him his brother's awesome uh his uh, son uh, little ed i call him yeah. um you know I, I call him my stepson he's actually on my will well it's not official yet he's gonna get my car god forbid something bad happened to me so ah you don't have any kids do you no no so no, we have dogs <laughs> how old are you now if you don't mind saying i'm sorry how old are you, if you don't mind telling us? Uh, 54. 54. I just turned 54 this month. Well, you know what? You're not too old to have kids. I've seen uh, uh, DeMiro. What's his name? Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro. Yeah, that's a guy. Yeah. He just he just had a baby. He's 80 years old. Wow. <laughs> so. Yeah. I, mean, I, was, I love kids, you know. Um, I remember when uh, Little Ed and uh, Katie were small. I was there when Katie was born. Um, and uh, they're like my kids, you know. Yeah. Uh, they're awesome, you know, and it's like they well, I know in, that uh, I know that you sure enjoy it. Luke's my nephew's company at the uh, racetrack, and uh, and you. Definitely he's a fine young man. Daddy and them guys. <laughs> yep. So. Yeah, he's you know if 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 we had more kids like that, you know, around us and stuff like that, the world would be a better place. Well, I'm lucky. My nephew's a motorhead. You know, his dad's a <laughs> motorhead. I'm a motorhead. We're, my son's a motorhead. We're all motorheads here. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've been known to be a pepperhead. <laughs> yeah, a pepperhead. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what's what's that like? Redhead? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's spicy, I guess. Oh, there you go. Well, redheads are spicy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, Rich yeah. Toll uh, wanted me to tell you that um, he will actually ask you, why do you talk so funny? <laughs> Good one, Rich. I like that. Do you guys know Rich? Don, Don, do you know Rich? I do, yep. He's an awesome guy. Um, he is. He got a badass GTO, too. Oh, my God. That car is so handsome. Um, well, that's my favorite. Him, him and his GTO, wife are absolutely wonderful. Cars. Yeah. What's that? I said, that's my favorite year GTO, what he's got. I love 65. Uh, I love the color uh, yeah. and stuff like that. Him and his wife, I remember the first time meeting him and his wife. Uh, in Linder's lot, and he was sitting down and stuff, and uh, uh, Robert was bantering back and forth, and we're having a good time and stuff, and, and um, he looks at me, he goes, you talk funny. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, listen, I'm probably the original 13 too damn big man, to tell him that, no, you don't. <laughs> yeah. And, he goes, and you, he goes, slow down, you talk fast. He says. So uh, we, we talk for like I'm about... I'm getting like, drunk, Rich. I'm telling you, it's really bad then. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think you had said to me one time before, and it's like, the problem with me, the difference between you and I, is that your energy level is down here and mine's up here. <laughs> no, you're, but no him, and I, him and I talked for like 45 minutes about, you know, about a non-Pontiac stuff and stuff. We, we really bonded really good. And stuff, and I've actually called him a couple times, like out of the blue. Hey, how you doing? And and whatnot and stuff. And um, well, you phrased that exactly right. Outside. You did all the talking because it's hard to get a word in edgewise with you, especially when you've been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. And when you're at the racetrack, you're amped up on top of it all. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> A lot of people they go, how do you go from like out of control to sort of like calm, cool, and relaxed inside the car? <laughs> well. That's good. You're high energy. I love it. So I have a secret to all that. You do? Let us in on that, please. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Your, uh, what is that, Elton John glasses? <laughs> yeah, so these actually fit inside my helmet. So I'll put these on if I'm racing somebody. I'll look over at them. Yeah, perfect. That'll freak like, them you out. You know what? That'll distract them. That's a good plan. I like it. Now yeah, you got those ones, though. too. You know yeah. what? Switch every time you go up. Yeah. There's a, we have a picture of, um, I actually race with the big ones on because they do fit in my helmet. And uh, a local track um, photographer took a picture and stuff like and The first time I did, I took them off and he got mad. So says, put the glass, do it past with those glasses on. I go, it's kind of hard to do that. <laughs> so are you going to bring your car to Norwalk this year? Uh, so that's, we're trying to do that. Um, but the problem is I don't have a trailer. Um, so... Uh, it's only what about a ten-hour ride for you guys, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit more than that. Yeah, that's. Uh, but um, the um, uh, one of our good friends, he's our welder. His name's uh, uh, um, Maddie Coco, and he's a local guy. Um, he has a uh, an enclosed car trailer. He's a little bit of maintenance and stuff, and he's a very close friend of ours. I called him the other day. I go, hey, listen, um, do you want to go? Can I borrow your trailer? And uh, would you like to be my guest in Norwalk? <laughs> and um, so he's a racer too. So. Um, he's a good racer, um, so it'd be nice to have him with us. Yep. Uh, because to race two cars with the three of us, because unfortunately Steve can't come this year. Um, so to race two cars with three people, especially Ed's car, um, it might be a little sporty. Yes, it is. So if um, Maddie comes with us, um, you know, because he has Maddie has a lot of race track experience and stuff like that, it'd be nice to have you know him with us too. You know, so be kind of like the crew chief. He can keep you guys pointed in the right direction. Well, that's a, how I'm doing. I do now. Um, but if I bring my car, you know, it's uh, I, most importantly, my car's easy. You know what I mean? Uh, I said, Luke, he can drive it if he wants. You know, it's the car's. <laughs> Don't tell him that too loud. He'll be in that car faster than you can shake a stick. Oh, he's already driven it. Well, I'm talking about down the track. If oh, you okay. give him the opportunity, I'll tell you right now, he's going to take it. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. He's, he's probably left the door. He's probably on his way here. <laughs> he probably, yep. You're probably right, because he's in the shop right now working on a car over there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they had, um, uh, yeah, so, you know, when you, have, when you bring, you know how it is, you bring two cars, it's it's a it's little a bit more sporty. Work. And especially a car like Ed's car. That car's a lot of work. Yeah, I mean, with a car, with, it's, only when it's fussy. I mean, we've had time. I see guys, they take the front ends off the car. The car's up in the air. 
Uh, if his Ed's car is up in the air or if there's something going, the hood's open, it's because there's you know something going on with it. For yeah. the, we had a lot of racing with that car where um, we you know the hood's open only to cool it off. Yeah, you're right. You know, you're just absolutely. since we've been turning it up, that's when it's not happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully that problem's fixed now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, everyone says it's like, well, you know, how off, you know, it's how much for how much, and you know, and, you know, they just don't get it. You know, that's that's a one of one car. There's yes. no one running. You know, Ram Man Five. I don't care whose they are. Heads. Right. You know, making that kinds of power yep. with you know fuel injected twin turbo. You know, yep. you know the year made for catalytic converters would run good on regular gas. You know, no one has that. Right. You know, so and people who try to tell you how to do it don't want you to know, so they're lying to you. You're right. Um, yep. Yep. And it's you know, luckily we finally got a bunch of guys to help us and point us in the right direction. Well, I'm so glad that you guys spent some time on the chassis dyno because that you needed to do that. That way yeah. you can watch it in a controlled environment. Instead yeah. of worrying about trying to make the car go down the track, you're more yeah. focused on the tune. Yeah, now he'll be able to drive the car, you know. Yeah. Um, well, Ed's, I mean, you know what? I got I, I to gotta give Ed kudos. I'm going to have him on the show too. But the, uh, you know, for him to go as fast as he's going right now and really little experience at that, his experience is his car. So, you know, he's he's doing really, really well with that thing. That, that boy can drive. I remember when he first, he has a 69 Camaro with a Ram Ant 4 Pontiac motor in it. And, uh, and that, that's, you go, you get all kinds of like nasty looks when he brings that car up. <laughs> um, right. And, uh, and that car's a fun car. That car with street tires and through the mufflers would go like 1180s, 1190s. Yeah. You know, and it's a five, and it's a four speed car. Yep. And, uh, and he can, he can drive that car. And I remember when we first put the Raven together, and I'm trying, so my job is to be the cheerleader, you know, hey, come on, man, you can do this, you know, I got your back, and, you know, you'll be fine, and yep. and I go, drive it like your Camaro, because he can drive it like he stole it, and he says to me, you know, Mike, he goes, it, I don't trust this car yet, he's like, it's not my Camaro, right. and then, like, that year, we went from barely getting down the track, next thing you know, the car's running eights, and next thing you know, 8-0, and then, you know, all the people saying, oh, you guys are posting times, and I'm like, listen, you don't just get inside of a car, never driven it before, and all of a sudden turn the wick up and go, It like, takes a while no. for your balls to grow for the end of that. <laughs> I mean, Let me that's, tell you, a, that's for, a fast car. I, I don't know if you guys, I'm sure you guys have seen the in-car stuff on that, but it's like, how the heck do you, so they always taught us, like, you know, drive with two hands on the wheel, you know, yeah. and he can drive that thing with one hand and shift the thing going 190 miles an hour, and I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. And you know what? People say, oh, 190 mile an hour. You go 190 <laughs> mile an hour one time and see how fast that is. That's flying. The hard part is when I think uh, it was a couple years ago, you were there, and he drove it off the end of the track because the mm -hmm. parachute's hit and open. And, um, and yeah. that's when you know it's fast. Yeah, when you're trying to that's stop when you he... really know it's fast because your butthole's buckering because you're out of track <laughs> and you're still going 150 mile an hour. <laughs> yeah, and the, yeah. that uh, summit track is shorter than New England, so and it's, it's a little downhill bit there too. It's not both a very ways. good shutdown area. So yeah, you end and, up um, the sand real easy at that track. He went in the length of the car, um, and he had the smarts enough to shut the motor off, and he went the long way around the track. You know, he went side to side a little bit to keep it under control. Yeah. Yeah. So to do that. And I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, I can't imagine that. Yeah. You know, it's muscle memory, you know what I mean? It just happens, you know? And very minimal damage too. So yeah, it, it tore up a little bit of suspension, uh, but that was it. Yeah. You know, if it wasn't for the tire rubbing, yeah. um, on the front tire rubbing and stuff, and Luke actually pointed that out, right. uh, you know, we could have actually made another pass in that car. Yeah. I think that you guys were getting ready to make another pass and Luke, Pointed that out to you. Hey, what's that? Yeah. Oh, hey, is the, tie, that, is the tire supposed to be hitting the control arm? Oh, no. <laughs> he might have saved that car. <laughs> yeah, 13 year old kid. We had like all the brain trust over there and stuff like that. And the 13 year old kid goes, hey, the on and off switch is on off, you know. <laughs> so, right, right. But he, now he, he drove, uh, uh, was it a couple years, the first year I brought my car, I got Dave Nazaro's trailer, and it has a winch on it. So it's only a 20 foot trailer, so the car barely fits in. So I'm backing it out on the winch, and my finger slips off the wrench, the, the winch button, and the car jerks. It comes off the hook. So the car stops rolling out of the, uh, the trailer, and it's going ever so slow. So I grab the front wheel. My finger gets stuck in between the caliper and the wheel, almost rips the end of my finger off. 
I'm yelling and screaming, get the car. <laughs> Thank God Jim and Caleb Robinson were standing right there. They grabbed the car, and it would have crashed into GTO's, GTO George's car, and, and he don't like us anyway, so that would have been bad. <laughs> uh, so, and I'm like, oh, my God. So I'm bleeding all over the place, right? And then they call, um, you know, uh, uh, Tin Indian performing street to the lanes. I got blood coming out of my finger. Steve's wrapping my finger into this big gauze. It looks like, you know, the, the Grinch that stole Christmas's finger. <laughs> I'm trying to put the helmet on. My finger's up. So we ended up going a couple rounds, and I had to put the car on the trailer, and it's hard to get in and out of it when it's in that small box. Yep. And I was so frustrated. It was getting late, and Luke is there, and I'm like, uh, I think I asked you. I go, can Luke drive? And he says, yeah, he moves cars in and out of the shop all the time. So I go, Luke, you think you can? Next thing you know, he's in the car. <laughs> I'm telling no, you. No, I go, listen, I go, when he hits the front, stop. <laughs> so he's like, wow. He's like, I drove a 10-second car. Yep. Go, you, I I know, you made his weekend, I can tell oh, you that. Yeah. He was all about it. He told all his friends and everything. Yeah, he has a, I actually made him a straw hat, I think, was it last year. Well, you know what? We got a picture of him. Share that picture. We got a picture of Luke and... Uh, him, that might be the straw hat that you uh, gave him because he's uh, wearing it. At, uh, he wears it at the shop every once in a while when he's building yeah. an engine. Let's see if we can find him here. I shared it with uh, my son. It should be in your uh, messages. Messages. Yeah. yeah. So that red car. That's my old sixty-seven. Uh, my sixty-seven. Okay. Well, if they want to go back for me. Well, I tell you what. I just love. New technology, it sucks. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's Amber. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, it's just funny how that up a little bit, I think. There it is. There's Luke. Is that the hat you got him? Yes, it is. There you go. There he's assembling an engine. Got the hat on. Yep. You know, he's a young smoky eunuch there. Yep. <laughs> we have, um, uh, even up here, even our home track in New England, you know, everyone knows me for the straw hat as well. And uh, we race with uh, a bunch of people from here. And uh, we have a, a good Pontiac turn, uh, turnout here. Um, and we actually, was it uh, last year, uh, not last year, but the year before, we had our own little Pontiac race. And uh, the, um, you know, we had uh, uh, Lenny Calvary was there. He brought, he had a 62 uh, gas or convertible Tempest. Oh, cool. Uh, uh, that car, he does our dyno testing for us and stuff. So it was cool to get him out there. Oh, I know um, Lenny. <laughs> yeah, uh, Lenny's awesome. He's a good dude. Oh, yeah, he is. Uh, I learned a lot when we had uh, my motor and uh, Ed's motor on the dyno. Uh, that was, like, super cool to spend time with him. And, and he's so calm and cool and collective. And yep. It's amazing. You put one jet in it and the, the difference, you know, good or bad. You know, it's like, holy cow. I put four jet sizes and said, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> yep. No, the, uh, he's been that, that a long was, time, so he's got a lot of experience, especially on the dyno. And, yeah, uh, it, it was great, and he's he's willing to he's he's patient too. So especially you need a lot of patience with me, you know. Yep. Uh, so yeah, uh, well, it was I know. pretty. I know. Trust me, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, but you know, I learned a lot with him and stuff. So we had a bunch of people. Uh, we had some uh, friends of ours. If you know, this is such a small world, right? Um, so, um, friends of ours from Wells Beach, Maine. It's only an hour from us north. Uh, 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 my friend Scott Veracker, his wife Bridget, and he has three daughters. Uh, we call them the Gems. Well, they call them the Gems. Grace, Ellen, and Mary. Uh, Grace has a, uh, I think it's a 64 Apache Chevy, uh, Chevy 2, but she also has a, uh, an F-Stock 68 GTO that uh, she got going. Um, and so we're trying to get them to go to Norwalk with it. Um, and uh, so we want to help them do some class racing this year. Oh, and uh, so I made them straw hats and so it's such a small world their place in maine is near us and so when we go to so i see them at the track and then we have like lunch and dinner with them up in maine and uh, so we have a couple pictures of us sitting around so last time we saw them, we gave them uh, ed actually gave them a bunch of raven shirts like all the girls raven shirts and uh, and i made uh, grace a straw hat <laughs> well you know what this year if you guys get to come to the track this year uh what, I'm gonna have to get you to get me a box of lobster tails. So we are. Well, I don't know. You, have you ever cooked lobster? Do you? Have, do you you know? don't know who I am, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I, you're right. I, I'm sorry. So how do you cook lobster? Is what I'm. <laughs> you can cook them two different ways. Uh, you can cook them on the grill. I kind of don't like doing that. Um, 
And well, the re you're supposed to what you do is when you cook them on the grill, you're supposed to get the knife and split their head open so they die like immediately. Right. Um, I like to boil them. Um, well, you're yeah, you're not the uh, only one that um, wanted me to bring lobster. Um, who um, <laughs> John Gadosh said asked me one time if I would bring lobster. <laughs> <laughs> um, I brought scallops wrapped in bacon. That's always good. That's uh, what the problem is. That stuff don't travel well. That's the problem. Well, you put it on ice. I mean, they ship it all over the world. Oh, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> so I'm uh, so um, little Ed can eat shellfish, so I had to be careful with that. So actually, uh, Ed can eat Ed can uh, eat lobster. So he has an allergic reaction to that, huh? Yeah. So um, Ed and his wife Tammy both have allergies. So what happens? They have kids, and next thing you know, they have all the allergies. Oh so yeah, our, the kids our, always get all the good stuff. All the good stuff. So yeah, I know. My poor son got all my allergies. It sucks. <laughs> But, yeah. You gotta take the good with the bad. <laughs> that thing exactly. had, um, you know what? I'm still waiting for the good. Hey, you got a dad that's in the Pontiacs. What more do you want? Oh, right. <laughs> I guess. They I mean, had, you know uh, what? I could be one of them Chevy guys. Well, <laughs> I'd like to be able to breathe though sometimes too. Oh. <laughs> they have, um, I do, uh, I put together the menu for our trip uh, for food, uh, snacks on the ride and stuff. Um, I remember one time going to the market, and his wife Tammy gave. She would have to actually um, approve the dinner menu. Yeah. And uh, so, because I didn't want to kill anybody, I remember at the market one time. You know, peanuts are good travel snacks, right? I go to grab a thing of peanuts off the top shelf, and the lady goes, "I go ah!" And the lady's like, "What's the matter? You see a bug?" And I'm like, "No, I almost killed one of my crew members." <laughs> well, you but, know, uh, I, I got one story to tell all you guys because. The, it, it just flipped out. I don't know if it was my daughter-in-law that flipped out or my uh, uh, sister-in-law. But anyhow, last year at the racetrack, we're all eating sandwiches. And uh, I think Dina brought over a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> brought over a sandwich. And I don't know if she handed it to Mike or handed it to Jamie. I don't know how it ended up on the ground. Anyhow, boom. And ended up flat on the face <laughs> on the racetrack surface. <laughs> It was you? Yeah, Mike picks that thing up, licks it off, puts it all back together. <laughs> you can't waste food, man. It's expensive. Oh, that just freaked out my sister-in-law. She couldn't believe it. <laughs> Who else was there? Um, hey, you know uh, what? The two-second else... rule. It was only on the ground for seconds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'll let food fall. We had, um, we had um, uh, who was it? Um, uh, Joel and um, the guys from... Um, uh, What's his name? Um, uh, uh, it's, it escapes me. Uh, uh, Lyles and all his guys. Who was it? Richard Lyles and all his guys. Okay, they had yeah, they had yeah. come over one night. Richard Lyles. Yeah, all of his guys showed up one time. Uh, Mikey and stuff like that. And uh, and uh, Tracy, they all showed up, and we're getting ready to go see them. Okay. So we got a cooler full of beer, and we got to go home. Also, they pull up, right? And um. Next thing you know, we're talking, right? And they're looking at the cars. And uh, so Tracy goes to me. He's like, what, Mike, you run out of paint money? And you, you ran out of paint? You couldn't paint your whole car, right? <laughs> and so we're bantering back and forth. So Steve goes, oh, there's been, there's been some, some time, so let's have some food. So we start cooking some steak tips. And so, I made barbecue skewers. And we eat all kinds of food. And I'm talking to, um, to Joel. And I'm eating a steak tip, and it falls on the ground. He looks at me. I look at him. I look at the ground. I pick it up, and I ate it. He goes, I didn't just see that, did I? I'm like, dude, this shit's expensive, man. I'm eating that. Yeah, yeah. I paid for it. I'm eating it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's good stuff. No, it's the uh, we had uh, uh, we made uh, little Ed bought uh, some steaks. And we made giant like brontosaurus steaks last time, yeah. and we finished up. So I eat the whole thing, even the plate. And uh, so it picks off all the fat and stuff. So we had all this, like, I had a Ziploc bag with all this stuff, and I was gonna make steak and eggs oh, in the morning. Man, you gotta eat the fat. That's the best you guess the best part. Yeah. So. It, it, he's not the wrong way. No, eat them things they gotta almost be like raw in the middle. They, they can't. They can't be overcooked. No, no. So uh, no, we know how to cook, right? So we get all the stuff, put it all. I put it all in a Ziploc bag, and I go uh, to uh, uh, Tracy and Joel, and Joel brings his dogs. You get two dogs, and uh, so I go, hey, I got this for your dogs. They zip open it up. It's still warm. They didn't give any to the dogs. They ate it themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Why waste good scraps? <laughs> Why waste good scraps? He's like, you guys eat good. Right. I'm like, listen, I go, you That's drive a long do. way. Every year, man, I tell you what, you guys party hard and you you eat well. So, are you guys gonna run a uh, a little RV trailer again this year? You think? And yeah, stuff? yeah, we gotta um, I think a little bit smaller. Ed's gonna send me the uh, the details because I just gotta figure out um, 
How I don't know why it is. I have, so I'm the biggest guy, and I always have to sleep in the top bunk, but I don't fit. <laughs> and so in the middle of the night, when you have to go to the bathroom because you know I'm 54, and I have to get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, it gets a little sporty. Oh yeah, that sounds fun, especially <laughs> drunk. <clears throat> well, I mean, be quite. Honest. I mean, so when, the last year we brought a car, and we had Ed's car and stuff, and um, and the car pretty much behaved. We had a couple issues and stuff like that, but you know. When it came done, after them racing and stuff, I was, we took showers and stuff. We had something to eat. We had a drink. And next thing you know, everyone's in bed. <laughs> You're getting old, Mike. That's what huh. happens it's like, you get old. It's like, I'm, t- I'm tired. It's not like how we used to, you know. But, um, yeah. it's, you know, it's a different kind of fun, though. The only thing I don't like when we bring a car, though, you miss kind of like the car show stuff, the, the vending stuff. And there's a lot of people on the other side I hope to see uh, yeah. that I don't get to see. That event's so big now that it's really hard to see it all, and, and even in a three- or four-day weekend. So... You know, this year I want to try to get up there <clears throat> all weekend. We're talking about making some kind of a camping arrangement, staying at the track this year. So it's a, it's. I, let me tell you, you don't experience a no walk experience if you leave. Well, you know what? We used to stay at the track. I used to have a motor home, and we would go every year. And then we had a pop up, and we we always set up, <clears throat> and we would party, and we would bring food, and we'd feed all our customers and have fun, and everybody sit around. <laughs> And tell lies just like we're doing tonight, and it was, yeah. you know, it was big fun. And uh, but the I don't lie never. <laughs> but the problem is, is my shop has grown so much over the last ten years that I really can't, I really can't be away from the shop that long. It just uh, yeah, yeah, you can. So listen, me and Brandon were talking earlier, right? And let me tell you, my best advice ever, and I got from a friend of mine. He was listen, if I die today, they're gonna go someplace else. And what? If I die today, they're going to go someplace else. You are absolutely right. And you know what? Somebody else is going to be uh, living in my house and they're going to be driving my car. So, <laughs> 100%. If you call my my cell phone, right, it says, hi, this is Michael. I'm currently not answering my phone. Leave a message and I'll call you back. Keep in mind, I do not conduct any business on Saturdays or Sundays. <laughs> I got my people trained because yeah. that's my day. Well, good for you, man. I, I can't get enough done during the week. What we do takes so much time and effort. It, it does. I just can't. I gotta. I gotta work a lot of hours. But but it is what it is. You know, it's my choice. I'm not complaining. It is, but uh, I, you know what? I'm 62 and I'm hitting the gas pedal. I'm gonna be bringing out two new cylinder heads this year. Probably really? two new intake manifolds this year. And uh, and we're gonna. Then we're stepping up our game from there. So we're. we're I'd like to see. We're, so is he? Is, is, you get away from that Tupperware type in uh, in manifold, are you? <laughs> well, no, you know what? That that intake actually works really, really well, as you see on Ed's car. <laughs> so, but uh, it uh, it's very versatile, and uh, and all the runners are equal length, which is very important. So that that intake actually works well. But we are working on another intake. Matter of fact, my son brought one with me. I'm gonna bring. I'll bring it over here. Oh, that'd be awesome. It's bolted down, so. <laughs> are you bring the whole table over? That's okay. <laughs> yeah. Bring the whole block over. You can pick it up. Yeah, why not? It's, it's <laughs> aluminum, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're uh, working on a couple of different versions of this, but this is a um, a very uh, primitive model that we're working on right now. Trying, we're trying to get. I'm I'm designing it. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do the runners. Toilet paper holders actually work very well for mock up. Yeah. <laughs> So what we're doing is we're bringing Pontiac people into the modern age. So these are going to be plastic intake manifolds. We're going to actually make them out of plastic. No kidding. 3D yeah. printed. So. Wow. But yep, this is a prototype. And uh, once we get this thing all ironed out, then uh, uh, I don't know what we're going to call it. But it's going to be cool. Mm-hmm. Those ports are just so huge. We have pictures of uh, Ed's ports with a tennis ball in them. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what? There's my beer can. It goes right down in there. <laughs> so yeah, those ports are big. Yep. <laughs> Very big. So that's awesome. Well, hey, you know what? You probably got to go to work in the morning. I know I don't. I get up every day at four thirty. I know my son gets up early every day too. So uh, we probably ought to start wrapping up here and uh, tell everybody good night. But uh, Michael, thank you so much for being yeah. on the show this evening. I had a blast. I really appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. Well, you know what? Every time we get with you guys, it's fun, and oh, yeah. uh, and that's uh, that that's why I wanted to have you on the show. And that and show up your pretty car. You know, so, <laughs> Thanks. You know, but uh, 
Yeah, thank you for uh, being here and uh, all our guests tonight. Thanks for coming. I don't know yep. how many people showed up tonight. I don't keep track of that. We look at that after we're all done. But yep. yeah. So, but yeah, it's uh, this is a good time and and uh, I don't know who I'm going to have next week. We'll find out. I haven't uh, thought of anybody to invite next week. I asked Ed if he wanted to be on the show or not, but he's not ready. He wants to go to the racetrack and get some numbers. So I asked him if it was okay if I could do this, and he said, uh, yeah, it's so fine. Just do it and enjoy it and stuff like that. You know? <laughs> I kind of feel I naked think, without him, you know? I felt, well, that you know what? It is kind of weird because you guys are like, the four musketeers, not the three. Yeah. But, <laughs> so, yeah, you I, know, you know, I, I, you know, I refer to friends like you have people that you know will help you move furniture and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, he's one of those guys that help you move a body. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we gonna bury this? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hurry up. <laughs> yeah, and you don't have very many friends like that. And you know yeah. what? I it, I did feel a little awkward asking you first, but you know what? I thought we're gonna lead into that because we're gonna probably have you back on the show with Ed and the gang. <laughs> because you guys are a team, and uh, and then you know, maybe there'll be a little more drinking going on, and uh, we'll get even a little crazier. So we'll yeah. see. Uh, maybe just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. just a little bit, a <laughs> little bit. Well, hey, Michael, thank you so much, buddy, yep. and uh, have a good evening, and we'll uh, see you probably at Norwalk. Love it, man. Really appreciate the time. All right, buddy. Thanks. Thanks. Peace out. All right, everybody, good night, and uh, thank you for showing up, and we'll see you guys uh, next week. Yep. I don't know what, who we're going to have for guests next week, but uh, now Easter is what, Sunday, right? Yes. Okay, so uh, I'm going to Nashville for the weekend. I won't be back till Monday, but I will be back in time for our show next week. So i got to figure out who I'm going to ask for a guest next week, and then I'll, uh, I'll put it on our Facebook page and let everybody know. But uh, thank you so much for showing up. Yeah, thank you.